Hey guys, welcome to Rotor Riot, Chad here. Today we're going to go through the basics of soldering. I know there's a lot of people out there that lift soldering pads off, they damage components. We're going to go through the do's and don'ts. First of all, use a decent soldering iron. You want something around to say a 40 to 60 watt, you want to be using the correct tip for the job. The soldering iron itself needs to be able to handle the type of job that you're doing. Number two, clean the tip of your soldering iron often. When you clean the tip, whether you're using a sponge or uh, the steel wool or, or whatever it is, what you're doing is you're removing the oxidization from the tip and that the heat transfer is going to be a lot better through to the job. Okay, number three, make sure you use good quality solder itself. 60-40 rosin core solder around the say the, the one, one and a half mil diameter, depending on what job you're doing. Don't want to be using lead free solder, just use what works works and you'll have a lot easier time soldering. Number four, flux. Flux is very important. Now flux is inside the actual uh, solder itself that you're using, if you're using the correct stuff. It is there basically to help to uh, join the alloys together and it is also there to stop the oxidization process that happens when hot metals are subjected to air. Now in some situations you may need to use extra flux and please don't be afraid to use that flux. Now flux itself is kind of like an acid so long term it is actually not very good for your electronic components. It's a good idea for the long term longevity to remove it afterwards before you put the heat shrink over it plus it makes it a lot, look a lot better the best way to remove the flux is isopropyl alcohol something like that and you can basically just uh, spray it on there and use a rag and it'll look like a lot better product and it'll last a lot longer in the long term if you do need to remove solder you've got things like the solder sucker and the solder wick itself to remove that it's best to use the, the right tool for the right job, uh, otherwise you could be damaging things. Right, so we've talked enough about the theory, let's actually get in to do some soldering. So we've got PDB, this is a very heavy duty PDB, it's got a lot of copper on it. So this is where we need a good quality soldering station that can handle that kind of heat. Realistically, yes, we should be using a bigger tip, but I don't have one handy, so I'm just going to be using the the three mil tip that I've got, 400 degrees Celsius or a little bit higher to ensure that we've got enough temperature to go into here. What engage there and away it goes. So first thing we want to do is to just twist it. That may ensures that all the wires themselves are not going to have stray wires when you're soldering it, keeps it all in place. What we want to do first, you want to put a little bit of solder on the on the tip itself like that. It doesn't need to be much. The molten solder will actually transfer heat a lot quicker to the wire or whatever surface you're doing it. So if I didn't have any solder on there at all, it would take a lot of, lot of time for the heat to transfer into the wire. If you put a little bit of wire, a little bit of solder on, on there like, like so, you can actually, it actually works a lot quicker. And once we've got it to that stage, I'm not actually putting solder onto the, the tip itself. I'm actually putting solder onto the, the job that I'm working on. And that's the only time you actually add solder to it. The rest of the time, whenever I'm adding solder, I'm actually adding solder to the job, not the tip. We've actually got a nice coverage of solder the whole way through, and it's all the way, it's all the way inside the wire, and it's nice and shiny. There's no bits of wire sticking out, and that is now tinned. So that's that wire done. Let's get onto the 18 gauge wire. I'll show you a different way of doing it. You don't even need to use the helping hands there. You can just have the wire out like so, and twist the wire around. That works as well. But exactly the same thing there now. We've got the, all the uh, the solder has been soaked up into the end of that wire. It's, it's all properly tinned and ready to go. What generally happens, I see a lot of the times too, is people will try and tin it and they'll only tin one side. So I don't know if you saw when I was actually tinning it, I actually was spinning it in my hands to get the whole way around because it is very easy to only tin one side and not get it fully, uh, the solder fully penetrated in there. And that makes it a little bit harder to solder later on. So now, once we've tinned the wires, now we need to tin the PDB now. And now what I'm going to be doing is putting the tip, the wetted side of the tip, down onto the pad that I want to solder. And then I'm going to be drawing the, the solder itself onto the pad. Not onto the tip, but onto the pad next to where the tip is. Now, this is something very interesting. If you can see here very closely, do you see that there, that tiny little solder ball? That came off when I was soldering that. If that was to get into an electronic component like that, 
then if you got into the wrong spot, then smoke's gonna come out the moment that you start that up. It pays to be very careful when you're soldering not to allow that to happen. Now, if you were to be soldering something like that, before you power it up, it'd be a very, very good idea to go and get a magnifying glass and just check over and make sure that a little solder ball didn't drop in between here somewhere because if it did that, that's when the smoke comes out when you first when you first power it up and that's bad. Now it's just a matter of joining the two. The best way that I have found to join these two is to heat up the pad with the wire just to one side and then draw the wire in. Then I usually bring the, um, the tip on top of the wire finish it off and then pull back off again and we're all done. So you could see that even with the higher temperature of this it took a while to do that. Now let's do a little bit of a um, uh, little bit of a test. So let's bring this down. We're going to bring the temperature down to say around about sort of 300. So 300 should be perfectly enough to actually solder this but because of the amount because of the smaller tip it may struggle. So we're waiting. If I waited and waited and waited eventually this is actually going to burn this off the PDB and I'm actually going to wreck it. So, oh, there we go. It just happened then. If we look very, very closely, you can actually see that pad is lifting off. When doing soldering, you can actually burn off a pad by having too little heat as well as too much heat. It's a combination of the heat and the amount of time on the workspace that you're actually working on. Rightio, next up, ESC. So I've got an old motor here and an old ESC. So on the underneath where the pads themselves haven't been soldered, I'm going to solder the ESC to the motor. Now for something like this, I would usually go probably 350 degrees, something like that is enough. The tinning process is pretty much the same. So we just a little bit of solder on the tip and then draw the solder into the work. And we are all done. And right here I've actually got an old motor. It's already got solder on it, but what I like to do is I like to freshen up the solder and make it clean because I, you never know what kind of solder is on there before. So I like to flush the solder out, which is what I'll do now. Because it might be a completely different type of solder that doesn't work so well with the solder that I'm using. So it's always good to have like with like. And there we go. And now we get to join the two of them together. Once again, clean the tip. A little bit of solder on the tip. It's always important give give it time to give it time to solidify or go solid because if you are too quick you'll see it move and that's when you uh, when it's still molten and that's when a dry solder joint is going to happen. Done, done, and done. So, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to win any Nobel Peace Prizes for um, the quality of the solder, but the, at the end of the day, that solder joint there is not going to fail. It's not a coiled solder joint. You can see it's nice and shiny and it works perfectly fine. Eh. Thanks for watching guys. I really do hope that everything we put in here was helpful to you on the basics of soldering. There is also a much more comprehensive tutorials online. Various people have them as well as RC model reviews, but please do check that out. But we just want to go over the basics of some getting a reasonable soldering job done. Like, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll be back to give you some more cool stuff very, very soon. Ciao, guys.